The Lone Star Tick, scientifically known as Amblyoma americanum, uh, is a pretty aggressive biting tick that we've actually known about since 1758. That was when it was first described. So it's been around for a long time, but its numbers have been increasing. Uh, in the past few decades, it's gone from just primarily the southern areas of the United States now up into the central United States, the southeast, the northeast. It even goes as far up as Wisconsin. The Heartland virus is a potentially deadly virus. It is a type of virus called a Banda virus, and it's relatively new. It was discovered in 2009 when two men who are unrelated came, became ill in Northwest Missouri, and they did an evaluation and found this new virus in their bodies. And uh, since then, we know that there's been more than 50 human cases across 11 states, mostly in the Midwest and South, including Georgia, uh, which is where we've seen some recent reports of finding Heartland virus in ticks. So A stands for avoid. Ticks aren't everywhere, thankfully. Uh, they are in the great outdoors, but there are some places in outdoors that are more likely to have ticks. So if you are going into a forest, for example, if there are areas with a lot of undergrowth, leaf litter, tall grasses, those would be the areas where you'd be more likely to encounter the ticks. Whereas if you're taking a walk and there's a nice clear path, you could stay in the middle of the path and really decrease your chances of coming into contact with ticks. B stands for bug spray. Whenever you go outdoors and it's in the summer, uh, spring and early fall when tick-borne diseases are a risk, you also want to wear a bug spray. Uh, you also want to wear a bug spray. Now, the CDC recommends a, a bug spray that either contains DEET, 30%, or picaridin. You could also use a bug spray that has oil of lemon eucalyptus in it. And those are all effective. The Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, has rated all of the different types of bug spray, tick and mosquito repellents, and have shown those three to be very effective. The third is C, and that's clothing. What you're wearing can help protect you from ticks. If you're going outside and you're going to be going through areas where there are tall grasses, you're going to be exposed to areas where ticks may be. Something as simple as tucking your pants into your socks could help prevent the ticks from finding bare skin where they can bite. Now, that's not always comfortable when it's very warm outside, so that's where the combination of clothing and bug spray come together. Yes, this is a perfect time to start thinking about tick-borne diseases. In the upper Midwest, we're finally starting to see some green grass again. As soon as the snow melts, ticks are potentially out and biting. So from early spring all the way up into fall, uh, right before the snow falls, that is a potential time for getting tick-borne diseases. Spring is considered a more dangerous time though, especially where the black-legged tick, also sometimes called the deer tick, is found because the early stages of that tick are very, very small, about the size of a poppy seed. Mm -hmm. And they can be very difficult to see on you if they're attached and biting you and yet they are capable of transmitting Lyme disease if they're attached for long enough. So that's why it's important to know what's out there and then use the ABCs of tick prevention to hopefully protect yourself from tick bites.